So well, nothing wrong with well, coffee. Nothing wrong, but you know, um, I've been off of it now for about two weeks. I just uh, trying to cut back on some of the sugar and cream because you know I can't drink it black. It's got to be peanut butter colored. So, at any rate, had a headaches for a few days. Um, so yeah, I went That's cold turkey. Wrong. Yes, sir. That's right. And you know, no condemnation for anybody drinking coffee. I'm not saying I won't have another cup sometime, but anyway, I'm just taking a break from it for a while, drinking some tea tonight. <laughs> Um, great to have uh, you on. Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ask your question. Uh, what kind of tea are you drinking? Well, this uh, was the only tea I could find tonight, and it wasn't my first choice, but it is green tea with a little bit of coconut and something else in there my brother had. Now, green tea will have caffeine, right? So It has actually more caffeine than uh, coffee. Yeah, so that's not my first choice, but um, it is what it is. It's all I had tonight. <laughs> so hey, praise God. Okay. Uh, you get tired. I get tired of just straight water sometimes, you know. And I've been drinking a lot of water, trying to drink more, and you know it just gets boring sometimes. So trying to figure out what to add to it, and uh, well, praise God for the simple things in life, like a cup of hot tea and a cold one tonight. Uh, good to have you on tonight. Uh, Brother John, you're no stranger to Omega Man, but you may be to some people that are tuning in for the first time. So uh, tell people about your ministry tonight as we're getting started, and give out your contact information. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I've been a pastor for about, uh, close to about 35 years or so. <clears throat> I've been in the ministry since uh, 1967 when I surrendered to preach, and um, I've been on the radio. I had a radio program on different stations for about 30 years, uh, Monday through Friday. I've written a number of books. Uh, I've been an evangelist. I traveled overseas in uh, Europe, particularly um, Scandinavian countries, uh, Sweden, Finland. Uh, some in Germany, a little bit in Holland, uh, some time ago. And um, God has called me in the very end times here to prepare people uh, for what is coming down the pipeline. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, this this is my purpose. We have a, uh, a weekly webcast from our <clears throat> church building church here in the, <clears throat> the greater Sacramento area and uh, if you want to catch it you can catch that uh, live on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and uh, also we got a website extensive website they got about 270 sermons uh, that are preached either on CDs or DVDs and they can be downloaded anytime and so basically, right now, I'm doing an outreach on uh, the Internet via website, and then also uh, have the privilege to be on Omega Man. Uh, we are, I'm, I am responding to a number of people that have written us and asked and also got the material. And um, uh, <clears throat> I was going to go a little, uh, just to share a little bit about that tonight, if I may. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, I'm, I'm glad to have you on tonight, and uh, we're simultaneously... Let me get the contact information, uh, which is... Uh... I apologize. Do we might have a delay. Can you hear me okay tonight? Blog Talk Radio. We've got a... Uh, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Tonight. Praise the Lord. I just wanted to say before you get started, we are simulcasting tonight on MixLR, as usual, and also Consuming Fire Radio Network. You have three ways to listen. Four, if you count the phone. Brother John, the microphone is yours. Take it away. I want to share, but I've been uh, on, on Omega Radio now for maybe about three or four weeks. And uh, we had a number of people that have uh, responded to us and purchased my book, Christian Dynamics. And uh, <clears throat> I found something um, common here, and I think that this might be of interest for everybody to hear. Uh, the people that have contacted us have problems with demonic problems, 
and um, uh, some have been involved in the occult, and others have not been involved in the occult. But there's one thing they all have in common. Um, they Most of them were Christians to begin with. I haven't found anyone who was not a Christian to begin with. And then they started backsliding. And when they started backsliding, they contracted a number of demonic problems. And um, so they, there was sickness, there was disturbances, and so on. Uh, just to give an example, we we had uh, uh, one lady that uh, called in from my state, <clears throat> and I'm not going to mention the state because I want to don't want to embarrass anyone. Uh, but she, uh, um, her background was that she came from a uh, Christian family. Her dad was a uh, was a Baptist minister, and um, when she was about maybe ten or eleven years old, something like this, her father. Uh, simply uh, stopped being a minister and uh, he became a full-fledged alcoholic and he created a lot of problems for the family. I found out that uh, his, da- his dad had also been an alcoholic and so this particular lady uh, did not have any problem with alcohol but uh, she had from the beginning of her life she had a spirit guide and this Spirit guide invited other demonic forces uh, because you can take a demon of alcoholism, uh, he can change vocation, he can do something else. So, demons, if they go down on a bloodline, does not necessarily express the same thing in the next bloodline, generation two or three. They can change the vocation. So, in this case, they gave her the gift of reflexology and uh, acupuncture. So uh, she started a little business where her husband and her, um, she started a little home business with that, and she got a number of people coming in, and she would treat them, and pay them to get away, and so on. So she decided uh, that maybe uh, this was not as good, so she didn't have any of the occult literature at all. So she basically was trying to do reflexology and she tried to do acupuncture without any uh, anything else. And she didn't understand that this was still a demonic power. As she was uh, drawing closer to Christ, she I don't know when she started turning back to Christ, but her and her husband started to repent and um, they wanted to get closer with Jesus. Then her customers dropped off. They didn't call her. And uh, as she contacted me, I said, well, that's a giveaway there because I said, when you get closer to Jesus, the demons get weaker and they are not able to work in the same way. So uh, she uh, immediately decided that uh, she was not going to have that business anymore and, and renounced that. And so I told her this, that just because you stop that does not mean that the demons leave you. You still have to have a deliverance. Um, then we had another lady um, from another state. So what was and um, I think this is one of the first programs we did, uh, Shannon. And so um, this is what she told uh, me later on. I just found it out about a week ago. This particular night that we were on the radio, uh, she had decided to commit suicide, and um, her husband had left her. He had uh, committed adultery, and um, she was very depressed and down, and um, she decided just to end it all that particular night. So she had done all the preparation in her apartment, and she was just about ready to start killing herself when she heard a knock on the door. And um, so she got startled, and she went to open a door, and outside stood a policeman. And uh, he had been uh, asked by her husband to come and ask if uh, they could pick up his clothing. And so she stood there and said, no, I don't want to let him in, and um, I don't want to get to do that tonight. So the policeman left. She closed the door. 
I do not know if she had a radio on or if she had a computer on or not with Omega Man or if she turned it on after that. But she got into the program. I was speaking about certain things, and then we opened up the phone lines. She called in. And uh, she asked, you know, if she had sinned and committed a, a, a sin when she simply separated herself from her husband when she committed adultery and did not want to repent and change. And I told her, no, she did not do done that. So that broke the spell, and uh, she's been attending our ministry here for about three weeks. And... Uh, so what the devil tried to do with her was simply to tell her that you have sinned, it's hopeless, it's not going to work out, you might as well kill yourself. And so, uh, Shannon, I'm really praising God that tonight this lady is still alive on this earth, and uh, she's been going through partial deliverance with us as we're working with her. And she is greatly rejoicing and very happy right now. Um, then I had a uh, lady from, um, this was, of course, California, another California lady. And uh, she had called in, and she had been uh, harassed by demons for about 20, 25 years and, and seen all kind of different situations. And so... Uh, we were told her that what she needs to do is to begin to close the doors and to look and see what opened the doors. Had a gentleman from Texas that uh, contacted us. He also purchased the book, and uh, he has been through deliverance for about. He started 1990. He had his first deliverance. He went to about a number of different places, and he never really got total relief and um, so all these people had one thing in common and that was simple this disobedience to the word of God and not understanding God's laws so before I get into and uh, talk about breaking curses here tonight I'd like to read from the gospel of John chapter 14 and verse number 15, the following. is John 14, 15. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And he simply said, Now, if you really love me, Jesus said, then you keep my commandments. You might ask, well, what are his commandments? Well, Jesus is a creator. Jesus is a lawgiver. Jesus created Adam and Eve. Jesus spoke to Abraham. He walked with Moses. And so Jesus gave the laws in the Old Testament that we have today. And I'm just going to do a very quick review here. Now, you might say, well, I'm saved by grace. Well, so am I. And you've got to understand that there are three types of laws in the Old Testament. First, we have the uh, moral law, which is found in the book, actually, in the Ten Commandments. And the moral law had no saving value. You did not get saved for keeping the Ten Commandments. It was simply God saying this, and Jesus said this, this is how you treat me, and this is how you treat other people. The next set of laws that we have are the practical laws. And the practical laws deals with hygiene, how to bury the dead, and um, what to eat. And the practical laws were given so that the people of Israel could have a maximum good time. In other words, without sickness. If you've been watching the Philippines uh, this last week and a half, one of the 
biggest fear they have is outbreak of typhoid and other diseases. And the very simple that is the breakdown of the sewer system. And also they do not have clean water. Part of the practical law, God simply told the Israelites when they were in the desert for 40 years, he said, now, when I go through the camp, if I see any human droppings, and I see who it is, I kill that person. He said, this is what I want you to do. You get a stick, I get a little shovel. When you need to go to the bathroom, you go outside the camp, dig a hole, do it in the hole, cover the hole, and go back and wash your hands. Well, that sounds, you know, reasonable. But why did God didn't say now, hey, Moses, tell the people this. We got a problem with typhoid, and we got other diseases here, so we got to have a sanitary system. God does not explain in the Bible why he says this and that. He simply said, this is what you do. Later we find out why we're doing it, and it's a good thing. Now, the last part of the law in the Old Testament is the sacrificial law. And we had a whole bunch of different laws, how they were to sacrifice, how the high priest was going to be dressed, and the uh, timing and so on, <clears throat> and how to go to set everything up. <clears throat> and the sacrificial law ended with Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that he became the sacrificial lamb. Once and for all, final sacrifice. So we don't sacrifice anymore. We don't do any other rituals that had to do with the sacrificial laws. But the Ten Commandments are still as good today as they were 5,000 years ago. The practical law is still as good as it was 5,000 years ago. And the very reason we get sick and we have problems is we don't follow these laws that God has given us. Let me take you now to John chapter 15. Jesus now is talking a little bit more stern to his followers, to his disciples, to the apostles, and the seventh others. He said this, I am the true vine, and my father is a husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that he may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except that it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in me. All of us have seen trees and bushes and so on. And there have been times on the property where we live that we have some bushes and stuff and something happens and the branch is bad news broken and just hangs there. You know, but well, you don't notice anything kids. the first day. Yeah, the leaves are still green and so on. Okay. But give it the next day, the leaves now beginning to they hang children. down. They're drying up. Yeah. The and color is changing. Any, any of them. And if you wait another two or three days, you find out that all the leaves have died. The nourishment from the vine did not go out through that branch. It had been cut. When you as a Christian backslide, there is a cutoff of the Holy Ghost power, that resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead. 
and we begin to dry up. We lose power. I didn't say that you lose your salvation, but you begin to lose power. And th this is what the demons are waiting for. Because I tell you what, if you take a tree and a branch dies, it doesn't take long for termites to show up. And the termites begin to chew on that piece of wood that no longer has nourishment from the vine. So the reason that so many of us, my, I was included in this many years ago, is that we forgot this here, and that is that we have to abide in Christ. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If you are not abiding in Christ, and you try to do the work of God, you try to witness, you might be trying to be a Sunday school teacher, do this and that. But you are backslidden. You're, you're breaking his commandments. You're not clean. Then there's not going to be a lot of work there. There's not going to be a lot of fruit either. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So, when it comes to deliverance, when it comes to get rid of demons, when it comes to pray for the sick, and whatever we need supernaturally, we cannot operate outside of Christ. There's no way, and a lot, a lot of people have tried to do this. Let me give you this example. Um, probably about six to seven months ago, uh, in the area I live, we um, contacted, we had actually got in contact with a, a Baptist pastor. And um, he was a great guy. He came here to our place, and he and his wife, and I sat down and talked with him. He had been in the Air Force for 20-some-odd um, years, and he got saved there, and they really got excited. And when he got out, God called him to become a minister. So he got trained and so on, and he started his church here in the area. Now, he, uh, he and his wife were out knocking on doors, he said, flyers into the community. I mean, the guy worked his tail off, if I can say so. And he had built a church. Well, he said it's warmer outside than. Up to about 50, 60 people. He is in here. So I asked him this question. I said, have you uh, ever thought of relocating? This is what he told me. I have worked too hard, invested too much. In and you, this. before you go to bed, can you check the and temperature says, on the I'm not uh, going to go. I'm not going to walk away from that. I will not do that. And um, so I thought, wow, that's nice. Right there. Did about. You turn it up? I turned it Maybe up, but it was not. Didn't come on. Later, after it I did heard its the fart man has thing. Been arrested. And he'd been arrested for um, child abuse. And I couldn't believe it. But here, here is the story behind that. In his privacy, pornography, and it created a lust, a burning lust. In the church it was a broken family. They had a uh, what are you looking for? A young girl there, about 15, 16 years old. And he decided to be a father to this young girl. 
And so the mother and the stepfather said, you know, this is great. The pastor taking an interest in her, you know, and helping out and so on. And they did not know that he took her out and he had sex with her and then brought her back. And finally, the news broke. He was arrested. He pleaded guilty. He's now facing eight and a half years in prison. When he comes out, he has to register as a sex offender. He, he will not I be always did the use the flashlight. Because he can't be around children. And here's a man there that loved the Lord with all his heart. Yeah. But he broke one of Jesus' commandments. Because Jesus said, if you look at the woman and lust after her, you have already committed adultery in your heart. And by looking at things, getting the pornography, the demon came in, the man simply lost control, and everything he has worked for for the last 25 years is gone. Children lost respect for their father. The wife left left him. She had to go to another church. And the price is very high. So what I want to share with you tonight is simple this and, and just very strong warning. You cannot live a sloppy life and say, Well, you know, God understands, and you know, if I have a drink here, you know, or if I <clears throat> watch this little movie here and there, if I just check this out and so on, it's not going to hurt anyone else. Yes, it is. When you sin against yourself, it will eventually hurt other people. So, that was my introduction for the program tonight. So, Shannon, any comment that you have? I tell you, that is, uh, that's so true, Brother John. You know, Satan only needs a crack. He's looking for a crack in our armor to get in and attack us. And we never get to the point where he's going to say, you know what, all right, I'm just going to give up on that person and not try. No, in fact, the closer we get to Jesus and the more you attack the enemy, Believe me, while there's protection in the blood of Jesus and you don't have to fear the enemy, don't ever think for a moment that uh, Satan has forgotten about you or I. And if we open up that door through known sin, you know what? God's no respecter of persons. He's told us what not to do, and if we willfully sin, while there is forgiveness, You could have dire consequences. You could have those demons come in and take you out. And it's a slippery slope. Oh, well, just this one time. You think you can get away with it? The demons are waiting for you and I to slip up. You know, uh, there's these movies, you know, you've seen like a fortress. Brother John, and uh, you've got uh, some watchmen up on the tower and uh, a little small group of soldiers behind the walls they're okay but then they look down across the the fields and along there's a tree line and there's thousands of of, uh, warriors out there just waiting watching probing looking for an opportunity on how they can penetrate and take that castle down and that's kind of a picture of demons they're out there they're on the periphery Sin lies at the door. It's waiting for an opportunity. We do not want to give the enemy an opportunity. And if we have, we need to be quick to repent, ask Jesus to forgive us, close that door, do some deliverance in Jesus' name. Don't wait. Uh, Many uh, men and women of God have been taken down through porno, through lust, adultery, pride, 
money. You know, there's a story, Brother John, that Brother Billy Graham, when he would go into a town to uh, preach a crusade, you know, he had to stay at a hotel, of course. He would never go into the hotel room unless one of his entourage went in there first and checked it, make sure there wasn't a naked woman hiding in there, trying to set him up. And I'm not saying this is the uh, only problem for men. No, ladies, same thing goes for you. The enemy would like to tempt you. With a good-looking man, pray on your weaknesses. Have you fallen to adultery? Uh, my grandfather, Brother John, a minister, of course, and he would never counsel with a sister unless the door to his office was open. You just don't want to put yourself in those situations where the enemy can tempt you. And, you know, uh, another, I gotta, you, you got me started, Brother John, so i got to tell you a third story. Is that okay? <laughs> yes. There was a minister, and he got an invite. Uh, to come over and pray for his sister and went over there to pray and he, he did it innocently and he walked in knocked on the door and he looked and uh, there was a table with two candles and two place settings and he knew exactly what had happened and he ran for his life like Joseph out of the hot tub and he said you know what I, I just, just couldn't take the chance he knew his weaknesses he didn't want to be in an inco- a compromising situation we've got to have our guard up the enemy is waiting to take us down let me give it back to you would you talk about the fortress uh, let me share this with you from the Bible we have in the book of Daniel to talk about the Belteshazzar it was a very wicked king and he had taken the vessels from the temple they were drinking out of them and so on. And um, he saw a hand writing on the wall. And he called for Daniel. And Daniel said that, you know, you've been weighed in the scales. You've been found uh, too light. And uh, tonight you're going to die. Babylon <clears throat> had a tremendous fortification. And it was very hard to, to break into that. Now the Persians figured this out that the river Euphrates ran through Babylon. And so what they did was but this, this guy was drinking and having a good time with all his buddies and soldiers and so on. They were upstream about a mile and they diverted the river. And suddenly, when the river would run under the wall, it was empty. It was just like a tunnel. And they streamed me about a thousands. And they took Babylon from the inside. They killed the king. They killed everybody around there. And that's how they took it. And that, that guy, he could not have figured out this, that they could divert the river. But that's how they got in, without hitting the walls. The walls were intact. Let me uh, talk about some curses. Last time we finished up with curse number 10, and I'm working on my book here, uh, Christian Dynamics, course number one. And if you have a book, I'm on page number 129. And um, curses, when we, when we do certain things, they simply open up the doors for demons. And this is what I wrote. There are three other pagan hot celebrations in the United States that will bring the curse of God upon a person participating. Uh, last week, we talked about Halloween. We talked about Christmas. And today, I'm going to talk about Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, this holiday celebration, is based upon a Roman god, Cupid who was known to the Romans as the son of the goddess Venus. In Greece, he was named Eros, the son of the goddess Aphrodite. Cupid, or Eros, was worshipped as a god of sexual love. A person who has participated in any events connected with Valentine's Day is giving honor to this 
pagan deity of sexual love and will invoke the wrath and curse from God. Let me read a scripture here from that. That's Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse number 9 is where we start. When you come into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. Let me read that slower. When you are come into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. In other words, whatever rituals they had, whatever customs they had, God said here to Israel, don't even look at it. Even if you don't worship the deities, don't pick up their customs. Yeah. They should not be found among you, any one that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination or observer of times, or the enchanter or a witch, or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirit, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God does drive them out from before you. You shall be perfect with the Lord your God. Valentine's Day is basically an American institution. I don't know where it came from here, but somebody invented it. It goes back to the Roman pagan traditions. If you have cards left and you do Valentine's Day and so on, and whatever you participate in, you are breaking God's spiritual law. You might be a preacher. You might be a choir leader. You might be a Sunday school teacher. And he says, well, I've done Valentine's Day for many, many years. And I haven't noticed anything. Well, the demons have come in. They're there. They are working. And in due time, they will break forth with some problems. Let's talk about cancer. Cancer doesn't happen overnight. Usually, cancer takes up to 20 years to develop. It's a slow breakdown of the immune system. A baby has cancer cells, but the immune system is so strong that they are killed off. And that's how God made us. A cancer cell actually is a cell that has rebelled against the creation order of God. But when our immune system goes down, the cancer cells are surviving, they're building a network, they're moving throughout the body, and suddenly, after 20 years, you're diagnosed with breast cancer, you might have prostate cancer, there might be a tumor in your head, whatever it is, colon cancer, very common. And you wonder, now, how did they get in? Because the Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus we are healed. We don't have to be sick. We don't have to take this. But where does it come from? Alzheimer's. Arthritis. All the different diseases that everybody, the baby boomers right now, are coming down with just about everything there is to come down with. And have you noticed this? Every city, every state building more and bigger hospitals, more nursing homes. Why? Because the baby boomers are getting older. And now they're going to have to pay the piper. So, if you have old Valentine's cards, they should be destroyed. And you should simply say, I am not going to worship this thing of God. 
The next one I'm going to talk about is St. Patrick's Day. And uh, this, again, is something that I found here in the United States when I arrived here. And um, I want to take you this time to 1 Timothy 2.5. That's First uh, Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 5. Let me read what I wrote here. St. Patrick's Day. This is the celebration of the Roman Catholic missionary who around 450 A.D. traveled to Ireland from England where he preached the Roman Catholic faith. He is credited with the converting the Irish people to the Roman Catholic faith. He later became a bishop, and after his death, he was made a saint to whom people now pray. God has spoken that we are not to contact the dead. There is only one mediator between man and God, that is Jesus Christ. A necromancer is someone contacted the dead, an abomination to God. March 17th is the day of St. Patrick, and people are supposed to wear something green that day, you know, to remember the, this Catholic bishop. It is a further shame that people also celebrate this man by drinking alcoholic beverages, including green beer. Any person participating in any St. Patrick's Day event is cursed by God. In First Timothy chapter two, verse number five, we read this: For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So here again, Christians don't think about it. Saint Patrick, the brother John. All the stores are in green. Brother John? Some kind of green. Yeah. Forgive me for interrupting. Our yes. Skype is breaking up. What I need to do is reset that. I'm going to drop you and bring you right back in two seconds. Let's see if that will clear it up. Okay. Stand by. Folks, stand by. We're going to try to uh, fix this. Can someone give me a sound check out there? And let me know that my audio is coming through. Someone on uh, BTR and also on MixLR, please. Thank you. We're going to redial him right now. Brother John, welcome back. Can you hear me? Sound check. I can hear you very well. Okay. Your, um, your Skype, or it could be coming from my end, is fragmenting a little bit. Let me see if we can do a tweak. Do you have any program running in addition? There's something bleeding off the bandwidth. Uh, I have my website up. Okay, let me take my website. Uh, close that. I got nothing. Well, let's see. I got my uh, email. Uh, I'll take that out. Okay, I'm off everything. Okay. Let's, uh, let's proceed. There we go. I didn't want to... Um, your important your message is too important for me to have problems with the Skype, and Skype is notorious for this. So we're just making an audio tweak, folks. This is live, no big deal. Continue on where you left off, uh, brother. So closing up here on St. Patrick's Day, I believe that, that many of you listening to me. Uh, have participated in this. You might have had a green tie, you might have had a green dress, whatever it is, and so on. In one way, you have half what the other you've done. When you did that, you opened yourself up to demonic forces, and this curse needs to be broken. The next one I want to talk about is ungodly Easter rituals. And um, the scripture. I want to turn to is Ezekiel chapter 8. That is a book of Ezekiel, and we're going to turn to chapter 8. And let me read to you here about ungodly Easter. That's Ezekiel 
chapter 8. And um, <clears throat> we're going to pick it up in verse number 9. Ungodly Easter rituals at the very centerpiece of the Christian faith. Today, in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when the true church of God to be celebrated in the great resurrection, we have been laced with a series of rituals which distract us from celebrating Jesus Christ and his resurrection and bring in pagan rituals that cause the wrath of God to fall upon us. The damnable practice of the Easter egg hunt is a pagan leftover ritual from Babylon. The Babylonians believed that an egg from heaven fell into the Euphrates River, and when it hatched, the goddess Ashtarta came out. She was in charge of sensual love, sex, maternity, and fertility. As a result, when the Christian church sponsors an Easter egg hunt on the resurrected they have Jesus. They are spitting Jesus in the face and worshiping this demon goddess of fertility. I don't know how many of you did uh, Easter egg hunt and, and rolled the eggs and so on. And I see that in just about it, Pentecostal churches, Baptist churches, every church there is here in the United States, they, they all have to have an Easter egg hunt. And they don't recognize that this is celebrating a pagan deity. I want to leave Ezekiel right now, and I'm going to turn to Jeremiah 7 first here. Now, Jeremiah 7 and verse number 16. Therefore, pray not you for this people, need to lift up crying of prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear you. See if you not what they do in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem. The children gather wood, the father kindle the fire, the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven, and to pour out the drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion? Of their own faces. Therefore, thus is the Lord God. Behold, my anger and my fury should be poured out upon this place, upon man, upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. This is the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Put your burnt offerings unto your sacrament, eat flesh. For I spake down unto your fathers, nor command them in the day that I brought them out of Egypt concerning birth offering and sacrifices. God sometimes told Israel this. If you continue this, the queen of heaven, well, here's a goddess. We also have Mary they, that they worship, which is a different story here. What happened is this. That God is not only punishing us individually by allowing demons to come in, but our nation is punished. Look back for the last five years. This nation has been punished. Hurricanes, tornadoes, fire, drought, flooding, you name it. We've had one disaster after the other happen. Just a few days ago, matter of fact, last weekend, tornadoes hitting in the area of Illinois and some other states, destroying 900 homes in just 10 minutes. And they said this is not the season for it. If you've never been through a hurricane or tornado, we don't really understand this. You're in your house, you have clothes, car, furniture, food, and so on. 
And when that tornado comes in, the hurricane comes in, in just a few minutes, your house does not exist. Your clothing is torn into pieces. Your food is gone. Car is gone. Everything is gone. And these people, we see them walking out. All they have is a cloth on their back. That's all that's left. Where do they go? Who's going to pay for this? How do they start over again? And God said here in Jeremiah chapter 9, he simply said this, that in my fury I will destroy. Why is it that pastors do not lift up the counsel of God? We ultimately tell people that God is a God of love. He is. But he's also God of judgment. And you don't trust God. God says, I love you. I will save you. But there's one thing I will not tolerate, and that is idolatry. When we sin, when we have intercourse, so to say, with Satan, because when we sin, you are actually dancing with the devil and his demons. God says, "I, I do not want that. I'm a jealous God. And if you do not understand it, I will have to punish the land. I will have to strike you to bring you back to your senses. The Easter Bunny is another pagan symbol that was worshipped in Egypt and associated with the moon. The rabbit symbolizes sex and fertility and was part of the rituals in ancient Egypt. Hot cross buns come from the Greece, from Greece where they were used to the worship by the Queen of Heaven. And I just read about the Queen of Heaven. The custom of a sunrise service at Easter is a leftover for the Baal worship practiced by the Canaanites. Thus we can see that the devil has been able to sneak in four pagan rituals on the most sacred day of the Christian church. Desecrate it and cause pastors and people to be cursed by God and loaded down with demons. God is not amused, but furious when his people worship demon gods. We need to reject paganism and turn back to God with all our hearts. And I'm pleading with you tonight that are listening to me, or later on when this is rerun again, that you understand that when you break God's commandments, you hurt yourself and you hurt others. Let me hit two more things that is very common in America. Let's talk about toasting. Now, we had... Valentine banquets at a little Baptist church in Salt Lake City, and I didn't know anything about it. And we also toasted. And when we toasted, of course, we used uh, grape juice or soda pop or whatever it is. But let me tell you what toasting is. Toasting is a pagan ritual going back to the worship of Bacchus, the god of alcohol and revelry. When glasses are lifted up, words are spoken, and then glasses move to touch the glasses, a drink offering has been presented to this demon god. Once this happens, a curse comes upon the participants, and demons enter them since they are worshipping Bacchus. It doesn't matter if people use non-alcoholic drinks. It is the ritual that counts. Well, I toasted many times before I understood this. So, this is something else that you want to break another curse, and you want to make sure that you don't participate in that. Let's talk about not throwing rice at the wedding. You see, these are what people call innocent practices. But these are the gateways of demons to come in. Throwing rice at the wedding, this is a pagan custom from Asia. 
and the ritual to invoke the demon gods to make the newly married couple fertile. Instead of being blessed, the newlyweds are cursed, and so are the people tossing the rice. This is a win-win situation for Satan. And another thing we have is, when you knock on wood, spitting three times, throwing salt over your shoulder, and other practices are all rituals used in witchcraft or cultism and will bring a curse upon a person doing it. In Jeremiah chapter 3, I mean chapter 10, verses 1 through 3, I read this. This is Jeremiah 10. Hear the word which the Lord speaks unto you, house of Israel. Thus is the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed of the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismay, dismayed at them. So we are not to copy anything in the occult. So tonight, I share with you, most likely, all of you listening to me have participated in this. Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, ungodly Easter rituals like the bunny, Easter egg hunt, and so on, toasting and throwing rice at the world wedding. There were people of simple sense, my brother John, hey, we're living now in the 21st century. Uh, we don't believe in demons anymore. We don't believe in a baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, Christianity today is just a rational faith. And, you know, it doesn't matter what we do. It does matter what you do. Rituals will change your life and you need to break those curses. So, Brother Shannon, any comments here from you? It's uh, it's true. Uh, we, you know, we have these rituals that have just permeated our society that we've grown up with since a child, you know? I know I did. Uh, Valentine's Day in school, I remember very well. And let me say something to that. Um, I definitely believe that that is a pagan holiday. We shouldn't worship that, worship these pagan gods. By the same token, I would say, I think uh, a day to uh, remember someone you love is awesome. You don't have to wait to February, was it 14th? <laughs> uh, uh, 17th. 17th. Yeah, 14th. 14th it is. One of those days uh, right, to do it. You can you can give a card uh, any day you want, folks. Uh, give, buy someone some candy and flowers. Why do we got to wait till February fourteenth to do it? You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's true. It's it's hard to come out of Babylon. You've got to make your decision. But uh, knowing what I know now. Um, I can't, in good conscience, celebrate uh, Balance Times Day. I don't do Halloween anymore. It's taking the thrill out of Christmas, knowing that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th. I won't mind having the time down, of course. You know what I'm saying? I don't say you got to go to work and say, oh, I don't believe in Christmas, so I'm going to work today. No, hey, take that time off. They give you the job and just spend it with your family and friends. But remember that Jesus wasn't born December 25th. I don't do Easter anymore. You know, I don't uh, celebrate the um, pagan holidays, but some of the things that you had fun doing, like giving gifts and remembering someone you love, you know, you don't have to wait to those days to do it anyway. Do it another day. You know, remember, you give a gift anytime you want. Anyway, that's just my two cents. Let me give it back to you. I believe that, you know, we right now in the United States, um, a couple of years ago, the divorce rate among secular people was about 50%. And 
And I think the divorce rate now is running 60 to 65 percent. And it used to be that people in churches, you know, we, we had a much lower divorce rate. Um, but the divorce rate now among the Christians is just as high as it is among the, the secular people. Oh, yes. And um, when I, uh, I looked at my uh, church a few years ago, and I could count actually on uh, about six to seven couples that had been together, never been divorced and remarried. And uh, it was hard to get an elder or deacon because, you know, um, th there were some great people that have repented of their sins and so on. And so uh, there's a tremendous casualty in our churches. And I would go so far to say this, that I believe that part of the breakup of marriages is that we, we simply we slip on what we call, to call the small things, like we just talked about here tonight, uh, celebrate Christmas, the Valentine's Day, Patrick's Day, uh, ungodly stuff with Easter and toasting and, and throwing rice and so on. Uh, these are inroads. And what breaks a marriage is simple this, that there is a tension that begins to build between the husband and the wife. And uh, the tension then will go into uh, offense, and uh, then we have dislike and so on. And I believe that this is accelerated by demonic forces. I've seen wives not being content. They're not happy with their husbands. They, they want more money. They want this or that. They're not content anymore. And I've seen husbands the same ways as well. You know, my wife is getting older, you know, and uh, she's not able to do what I'd like her to do and stuff like this. And you want to trade her in, like you trade in the car and get a newer model and uh, just dump her on the used market. So I believe that in order to preserve our marriages, we need to think about what causes cracks in our relationships. And so I think it is not just demonic, we got demons coming in, but there are consequences. And uh, then once we, we start down the road, uh, there is grief, there is sorrow, and um, regrets. There are things that cannot come back. It would be very sad. So I would really emphasize, if you're listening tonight, or actually I should say if you're listening, that you pay attention. Uh, if you want to uh, have this book that I'm working out of, because this book needs a lot of different things, you can go to our website, and it's called Christian Dynamics Course Number One, and uh, you can purchase it there uh, from the website. So, is it possible to take any phone calls, Shannon, tonight? Do you have the banks open? Yes, sir, we do. We've got uh, phone capability tonight. Okay, folks, we are on Channel 2 tonight. So the dial-in number anytime we do a Channel 2 show is area code 323-784-9622. If you've got a question, got a comment uh, on what we're talking about tonight, you need prayer, whatever the case may be, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, there are no callers in the queue right now, so this is your opportunity. If you'd like to call in, area code 3 Two three seven eight four nine six two two. Now I will say we've got a full house out there tonight. We got as good of a turnout in this late show as we did earlier today. I want to say uh, God bless Robert Hawes. I'm going to say shouts out to Ivan Harris. We've got Adam, uh, Chris Wood, Consuming Fire Radio Network. We've got Soul Man, Low Down Insider. We've got Yahweh Forever, Evan Lee, Natalie Albain. Brigitte is tuning in, Brother John from Switzerland. We've got uh, Albert the Bow Hunter from Delaware. Love you, Brother Albert. Who else we got? Let me a uh, bunch of guests out there now. If you if you're in here as a guest, the question is why. 
All you got to do is sign up for a free account with MixLR. Just register a username you want, and you can come on, add a photograph, and we can say hello to you by name. But a lot of guests out there. And then over on the other side, we've got uh, Sister Lisa Gold, Margaret Cerna from Texas. We've got Reed in California, Dory Goldfish. We've got a lot of acronyms out there, Brother John, but these are real people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like the Omega Man, he's a real Lord. person, too. Um, praise the Lord. It's great to have you out there. Now, before we continue, uh, we've got those lines open. Open. We're going to take a phone call here. Get in the queue right now. We'll take your calls. Brother John, before we take that first call, uh, give out your contact information again, please. And you mis- mentioned a book called Christian Dynamics. Is uh, that a course someone can order? Uh, Christian Dynamics, uh, course number one, is uh, the main book that we use in our ministry for deliverance. And to help people get uh, started back uh, in victory. And in the book, I deal with salvation. I tell you who the enemy is, the result of occult involvement, health, the birthright of every Christian. We talk about biblical curses, which I'm doing right now on the air. Uh, we talk about demon possession and demon oppression, counterfeit anointing, how to handle demonic problems, and the casting out of demons. And we also deal with tattoos, gambling, sipping saints, and there's nothing funny in comic books. So this is a handbook, um, and particularly as we come down to the end times, uh, this can be used in home studies. You can have a group of people with you. You, you can go through and study this book together. You can pray for one another, have deliverance uh, together, and so on. So, uh, this is a tool that God has made me. It took me 16 years to write this and finish this up. And you find this on our website, eaec.org. That's European American Evangelist.org. And let me say this, we have been down for about 10 days, and we just got up yesterday. And then we took a couple of nose dives temporarily, but as far as I'm concerned tonight, we are back up, and we should be safe and secure. Uh, so you can reach us via our website. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to that first caller. Area code 903. 903, you're on the air with Brother John Terrell. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Hey, doing great. What's your name and where are you calling from tonight? Uh, my name is Tamron. I'm from East Texas. Tamron? Tamara, with Ta- a T. Ta- uh, Tamara, yeah, now I got it. Awesome. East Texas. Hey, welcome aboard, Tamara. You're on with Brother John. Uh, thank you. Uh, how are you? I'm doing great, Brother I'm doing John. good. How are you doing, Tamara? I'm fine. This is Tamara. I, I was calling uh, to say that I really like this show, and um, I really enjoyed the show. And um, I was going to ask y'all to pray for me. Well, you called the right place. We'd love to tonight. Tell us uh, how we can pray tonight. What's been going on in your life? Well, my husband is uh, needs a, a, a new job, and he um, sent his resume in, and we don't know if he got the new job or not and uh just uh more of the Lord. I need more of the Lord. And I have two girls, so pray for our family. Brother John? 
Our Heavenly Father, we, we want to thank you and praise you, Father, and we can pray for our sister Tamara here, Father God, and her husband. And Lord, your word of God says that we seek the kingdom of God first, all these things should be added unto us. And I know that this couple, Father God, are seeking you with all their heart, and they try to please you and walk with you. And we thank you, Father God, that you're going to add this job to what he needs, Lord, to have the income, where they be able to pay their rent, food on the table, clothes, and so on, and transportation. So that, Father God, he will not have a need, and we praise you for that. Also, to pray for the two children, Father God, that you protect them, you guide them and lead them, Lord. And we pray you give them the gift of repentance, that they will walk in cleansing and under the blood of Jesus the rest of their lives. And that Satan should not be able to take them out and to set them into a tailspin. But, Lord, that they will go straight and be great Christian ladies as they grow up. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I agree. Yes. Anything else you need prayer for tonight, Sister? Are there any other comments? Well, I I, I was looking for a scripture. Um, I'm not, not sure where it is, but it's talking about God will fuse our walls uh, with agates and rubies and carbuncles. Do you know where that, that scripture is? Hmm. Is it in Isaiah? Well, let's see. I'm doing a Google search right now. Uh, okay, Isaiah. Hey, thank God for Google, right? Isaiah fifty-four twelve. Let me see. That may be the one you're looking for. Uh, what does it say in the King James? I'm looking that up again. Uh, and I will make thy windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones. Yes, that's it. Isaiah 54, 12. That's it. <laughs> you know I was on that very page when you found it. <laughs> that helps me a lot. Google. That's that's amazing. You know, Brother uh, John, it is good for some things, even though it is the New World Order. <laughs> Yes. You know I have a radio show, too. Oh, you do? Yes, on Blog Talk Radio. Fantastic. Uh, give out your uh, your radio URL. Uh, it's Healing Waters Prophetic Flow Radio on Blog Talk Radio. And uh, I do Bible studies. And my husband and I have been in deliverance for like 25 Five years, and um, we've received a lot, a lot of healing. And I'm going to get Pastor John's book, and I'm looking forward to a lot more healing uh, once I get into reading that. And uh, I just, God is awesome. Uh, He's very, very awesome. I I have a little testimony, if I can tell it. Absolutely. Go for it. Well, I've been calling Pastor John and his precious wife and asking for prayer because uh, I've been through a lot of things in my life uh, with abuse and different things. And the Lord um, was dealing with my father. And uh, it's, it's some pretty hard things to look at. And um, uh, this man that God uh, used in our lives for 10 years, he was a powerful intercessor. His name was Dr. Null uh, out at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp. I don't know if you've heard of him, but... He's gone on to be with the Lord, but he he told me that I had a problem with the worship of man, 
and um, I never could get to the root of that. And uh, I, I was, I went to church, and and someone told me there's you were you worshipped your dad. You worshipped your dad somehow, and uh, I didn't know it, but but uh, Pastor John's uh, intercession people were praying for me, their group, and the night they were praying for me, I saw a memory of where I was forced to uh, worship my dad in an evil way. And I saw everything about the memory. It was so painful. And um, I got set free. I I just uh, forgave my dad. And and, um, I've been seeking the root to that worship of man for 26 years. Wow. And, you know, worship of man, fear of man, and the Lord uncovered it last night. And he showed me the whole, it, it was a blocked memory. He showed me the whole entire memory. He showed me everything. It, it was it was pretty amazing. It, it, it was amazing. Hey, praise the Lord, Tam- uh, Tamara. That's a real blessing because uh, many of us are still looking for keys to unlock some, you know, things that may have been deeply embedded and we've long forgotten. Could be generational, et cetera. And uh, I tell you, that's real wealth for your soul right there. God really blessed you. If uh, you've been dealing with that for that many years, and uh, he unlocked it for you, gave you freedom. Praise the Lord. Yes, there's power in prayer, and I just thank God for uh, the body of Christ. And um, I'm just... I just want to say an encouragement to the people out there. If you have, uh, you know, there's hidden hidden roots to things sometimes. You don't, don't know why you are the way you are. You might not have things blocked out. You know, don't give up. Keep seeking God with all your heart. When you are ready, he will show you. Amen. And I want to say, uh, you mentioned Dr. Uh, William Knoll, Dr. Bill Knoll. Uh, I know him really well. I never get, had the uh, honor to meet him, but uh, I know his audio tapes well and awesome teaching. Uh, Lake Hamilton Bible Camp. I have many of those tapes actually myself and love listening to him. And uh, he wrote yeah, a great he was book. My- yeah, uh, the roots to rejection. Yes. Yes, uh, he was my spiritual father for like ten years. Wow. And um, he prayed for me. He uh, looked up everything about my dad. Yes. He told he told me the time in my life that I would see everything about my dad. Everything he prophesied came to pass. He prayed for me. Uh, he looked up everything about my dad on the Internet and found it. He said that I was going to find it one day. I did. He said every, it, it was incredible. He was, he was a very mighty, mighty man of God. Yes, ma'am. It was a a, a great uh, legacy of audios he left over there in Lake Hamilton, and that book, Roots of Rejection, really awesome. I would like to have met him one day in heaven. <laughs> Tamara, thank you for calling in tonight. Okay, God bless y'all. I really enjoy your show. Praise the Lord. That was Tamara from 
Texas. Uh, uh, we're going to go to the next caller. We're live right now with Minister John Terrell. If you'd like to talk to him, you got a question, comment, you need prayer, call in at 323-784-9622. Praise the Lord. Stand by. We're going to go to caller 514 Erie Code. Hello. Hello. It's, it's uh, Sister Joanne from Montreal. How hey. are you? Hey, Joanne. Hey. Uh, Come on, tell me And uh, Pastor, that I've uh, heard a uh, few times. Uh, I have uh, some questions to ask you, and also I need prayer. I um, uh, had the, the opportunity to talk uh, to, to call a few times, so you know, Brother Shannon, a little about me, but not the uh, pastor, the pastor that is on air right now. But I I, I like what uh, he's preaching because I'm coming from a heavy background. I I, I wonder in uh, in what I have. Not been involved trying to find the truth, and uh, when I uh, arrived in the Christian world, I could say I made I made more a crash in the Christian world than it it uh, affected me more than it helped me. I happened to uh, to go in a in a church where the, it it became. I'm uh, abusive in uh, all things, and uh, ha- all. Uh, I really, when I tell you that I made a crash in the Christian world, it, it's real because uh, I saw so many heavy things. I could say, in a way, heavy, heavier than uh, what uh, I was uh, looking for, uh, searching for the truth and. Uh, uh, because that church has been uh, closed since that time, I tried to find another place, and uh, uh, it, it's always uh, it's like, like uh, I think I, I developed what the uh, uh, paranoia to go in another church because it's like I always see things that the people don't see. Because of my, uh, because I, I have more discernment because of uh, where I'm coming from, I have more, more discernment to boast myself, uh, and not at all because I know I, I need deliverance too at the same time. But I see things that uh, many Christians don't see. Uh, I I don't approve uh, what. Uh, and, uh, Many Christians approve because I, I know uh, from what, uh, where I'm coming from, and uh, I just find it uh, more downlifting than uplifting. Uh, like I, I used to go to another church uh, after, and uh, finally uh, the, the 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 apostle and the prophet uh, divorced from his wife, uh, which was really. Uh, a, a, a godly uh, woman, and I, I, I just can't. Uh, he has been taken, uh, you know, uh, I would say in quarantine for, for a while, and now he's back in the ministry. But it's like I can't go there because I, I need to find a like a, a normal, uh, I would say, a go- godly couple couple and not the divorced people because of my you know, I don't have a good uh, testimony from my own family about that so uh, and I it just I just can't understand how come uh, some uh, men of God can, can fall and after they come back and it's okay uh, bon, we go on and the past is the past and uh, you know like like the world I can uh, I can understand more uh, from the world but because even in the world there are people that are more uh, faithful to each other in terms of uh, having uh, a life as a, as a couple so I'm struggling uh, 
to find the place where I, I could uh, uh, spirit-filled uh, church, but at the same time uh, balanced. And uh, what can I say? I'm uh, I, I'm scared. It's like I'm I became scared mainly of an uh, African pastor because they, they really uh, when they were trying to uh, to uh, get, to uh, do deliverance, it it was. Was no, not normal. They were they were screaming, you know, in my ears. Oh, I, I I think I was going to become uh, uh, deaf. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, uh, I lost my ear because they were Short screaming. Enough, you don't do deliverance no, like that. I think I have a, a psychosomatic uh, disorder related to uh, my history. And, uh, Brother John, what do you say? What? Uh, let's take one part at a time. Okay. So, so let's stay, stay focused. Okay, I, I have so many things to share, but... Uh, let's get organized. Go. Uh, I would say uh, one thing at a time. Yeah. No? <laughs> I think you're talking about is, uh, you're saying you're having a hard time fellowshipping. Is that right? Finding a good church? It's because uh, they, it's like uh, they are, there is a big, I don't know, a spirit like of uh, subtle uh, control and uh, you say, Brother John, using the, the, the like titles to, to, to dominate, uh, uh, you know, and uh, make you feel like, like you are, are uh, either you are uh, an. an uh, you know, listen, and uh, I don't, it's more than that, but it's hard to explain. It's something I sense when I hear them talking uh, to me, or I'm very uh, se- sensitive, but I always didn't uh, like that. I think it's part of uh, uh, God that, uh, a gift that God uh, gave me, but at, at the same time, it's uh, it's uh, it's not. I also uh, I, I have many uh, I have abused in many, many uh, uh, in many ways spiritually uh, mentally emotionally, physically so I have a lot of bruises and at the same time I, I was involved in my, my, my family so and uh, also that I know that, 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 that I, I get rid of many things but still there are uh, I'm I'm struggling and I don't. Brother John, I may be having audio communication problems. Are you having a hard time hearing me tonight? Can, I can okay. hear you very well. Okay, Sister Joanne yeah. may not be able to. I want to make sure because we've been having fragmented Skype issues tonight. Joanne, sound check. Okay. You hear me? Yes. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. But listen, let's stay focused here. You're overwhelming me. You've got a thousand issues. Okay, it's because uh, I try to say, like, uh, for uh, I don't know how many years of uh, struggle in uh, ten minutes. <laughs> well, we can't, that's not going to help you or us. But um, I want to number one applaud you because I know it's got to be difficult translating from French to English, so I'll allow for that too. But listen, uh, let's start with the first issue you've got tonight. You feel isolated, don't you? Uh, I also feel isolated because I have uh, fibromyalgia since many years, and I have difficulty to uh, to move. Well, the move is missing. To, uh, to, to, to move, uh, you know, I have difficulty. Is, uh, uh, I'm trapped with that you... since uh, many years, and it's... Uh, Stop right there. Let me ask you uh, a with, question. The weather what? condition we have here, it's not Go helping ahead. me either. Stop. I have Listen. money issues. I'm uh, living alone. I'm struggling with all kinds of things uh, when it's I not people that... In the name of They're Jesus. calling me for help, and uh, it's like too much. Joanne, pay attention, please. Yes. Let's concentrate. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. We love you, sister, and so does the Lord. And you're welcome to uh, call. I love you, too. It's why I'm always calling you back, because uh, till I find a place, uh, I know that uh, give Brother Omega John. Man is uh, somewhere uh, <laughs> on in the airwaves, and it's a blessing. He's got something for you. Okay, so 
let's go back to what you said 10 minutes ago, which you're talking about. You've been having a hard time finding a place to fellowship. Brother John, how would you respond to that? Well, it is uh, uh, harder and harder. It it is more harder to find places of fellowship because so many churches are are, uh, compromising. Uh, We are offering, this is what we can do for this lady, uh, every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, which will be, uh, if she's in Canada, probably be about 12 o'clock, we have a live service. And uh, so you can uh, be part of the message and listen to that. You can also respond back to us. We will respond back to you. So okay. a lot of people are subscribing, and if they can't get the live webcast, they're subscribing to my sermons. And uh, we had them either on DVDs or CDs or even cassettes. We still have cassettes. And a lot of people uh, that are scattered around the world are um, either subscribing to us, my sermons or they are listening on live, or you can even go and pull them down from my website and uh, mm-hmm. that's some, some people can fellowship, you can get some uh, teaching that is centered on the Bible. Joanne, what part of uh, Canada do you live in right now? Oh, it's, uh, it's, by, it's near uh, Montreal, uh, near downtown Montreal. Okay, so in I don't the know the of, I would say it's area. It's little, uh, city near Montreal, okay. near downtown Montreal. I'm not that familiar with Canada. I hear it's a beautiful country. But I was talking to a brother today from Toronto, and he said, you know, it is true that um, some areas out here kind of spread out, and there may not be a lot of options for churches in an area. I would say to someone in America who has went to a church and they don't feel the Spirit of God there, listen, some places there's street churches on every corner. Go to another church and see if the Spirit of God rests on that church and uh, how you feel when you walk through the door. Um don't judge a church. I have a by question. I have a dream about a messianic church. Uh, I used comment. to go there uh, once in a while, and uh, something happened, and the many people left, and now it has changed, and it's more uh, uh, now uh, through uh, the internet and the TV with other people. But I had the dream, and I, I don't know because I, I, I received dream when I was uh, very involved in the other church where I, I was there five years and uh, doing the mainly uh, mainly uh, very close to the pastor but involved in the the media uh, the media department. Uh, the dream I had about that messianic church is that Just I let, was uh, uh, stand by a second. Okay. I'm not interested in hearing the dream at this point. Let me respond to your question. You didn't give me a chance. Okay. Sorry. What I was trying to say to you <laughs> is... Plus part of the question, if I, it would be a good church to go there, be related to the dream I had with well, that church. Well, I wouldn't worry about the dream the right question. now. Uh, what I would worry about is you've got to find another place to fellowship. So the first question is, are there any other mm-hmm. churches in the area? And what I was going to say is... Don't judge a church by how many people are parked in the parking lot. If you're looking for a mega church, oh no 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 no, no anyway, uh, I don't uh, because of my problems. That doesn't I mean have that, it doesn't churches. mean that uh, the more people are there, that God is resting that building. You know what? Oh no, sometimes I the little in church the places. To be honest. Sometimes the little church on the hill, you know, they may not have a big group, but if they read the Word of God, uh, mm-hmm. they preach Jesus Christ and Him crucified. They sing some songs, and you feel good in your spirit when you go there. Then praise God, you got some fellowship. You might have to look okay. around because it's becoming harder and harder to find churches that have not compromised. There's still some great churches out there, and we need to fellowship one for another. God didn't create us to be alone. I, I've realized that myself. I've isolated myself at times. So mm-hmm. you want to try to find another church. Uh, Brother John, how would you respond to that? I think that uh, what she has to do with is to pray and just keep lo- looking for it. Yes. In the meantime, if you can't find something, uh, then mm-hmm. you know you have internet churches uh, where she oh, can get some faith. I go. Uh, I'm almost always on, on internet uh, on different teachings, including uh, all kinds of deliverance teachings and things like that to help me. Uh, and, not, the and also, I have uh, Christian friends, uh, not in Canada, but I, I can uh, call uh, them and pray with them. So. Uh, in a way, I'm not so isolated, but I mean, uh, in a way, I'm, I'm, I am. 
Well, you know, sister, no praise God for the Internet because, you know what, there's something out there, Babel. Um, we've got uh, Brother John, give your schedule of services there on the weekend. Uh, okay. Sunday morning, uh, 9 o'clock Pacific Time, uh, Eastern Standard Time will be uh, at noon, and uh, uh, in the, in the okay. midsection will be 11 o'clock. Now, in addition and, uh, to that, we ha- what else? Have a, uh, we also have uh, sermons that are on uh, our website. So they can be, I got about 250 sermons data with just about every subject you can think of. So if somebody okay. really needs to want some food, uh, we have it on our website. Amen to that. Okay. Uh, and that's just one example. There's a lot of stuff out there. Look, um, where there's a will, there's a way. We've got the ministryofsalvation.com that meets every day for early risers at 8 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Sunday. You can reach out over a telephone line in U.S. Air Canada. Call in and uh, join with some brothers and sisters and pray before you go to work. That's another opportunity out there. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff out there. So, you know, mm-hmm. we're just going to pray for you right now. Brother John, um, as we're winding up this call with our sister, I would like you to pray in whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Let's come in agreement for our sister that the Lord will bring some answers to some of these issues that she's battling with right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for touching this woman, Father God. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I bind up all confusion and all rejections that have been attacking her. Yes. And I thank you, Father God, for making her single-minded and that she'll be able to focus. And that, Lord, she will look more upon Jesus than upon what's around her. And I thank you, Father God, that you love her, you will carry her, and you will help her in every way as she trusts you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I would add to that, Father God, we thank you for Sister Joanne. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ over her. We ask that you would put a hedge of protection, a wall of fire from Zechariah 2 and 5 around her. Loose your ministering angels to her, Lord, tonight. Power, love, and a sound mind to all of us tuning in, in Jesus Christ's name. We ask that you would give her favor, Lord God. Help her to find the place of fellowship that you would have her to go to there, Lord. And we ask this in Jesus Christ's mighty name, Lord. Bring your healing for her body. Deliverance for her mind and meet all of her needs, Lord, according to your riches and glory in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Joanne, uh, before I take my next call, do you have an email if someone out there tuning in, maybe in your area, would like to uh, make friends with you? Uh, is there any way that people can contact you? have an email address? Oh, I have more than one. Uh, just give one um, out. There may be someone that says, hey, I'm in your area. Why don't we go have some coffee together? Uh, and and you come over to my church. You never know who's tuning in out there. Uh huh. But uh, yes. Uh, what email would you like? Can to I say? Out? Can I say it now? Yes, give the email out. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Adonai seven underscore seven uh, commercial a uh, yahoo dot ca. One more time. That. Adonai seven underscore seven uh, Yahoo dot ca. Praise the Lord, Joanne. God bless you. Thank you for calling in today, folks. We're live right now with Minister John Terrell. We still got time. And Brother John, do you have more message tonight? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, how are you doing for time? Would you like to take another call? Uh, I'm... Yes. Okay. Uh, we still got time here with Brother John. I always have time in my extra back pocket, extra time. <laughs> uh, let's see. Call in right now, 323-784-9622. I want to say hello to Deacon Albert and Deaconess Golt out there. God bless you both. Let's go to 907 area code. I believe that's from um, Alaska. Am I right, Anchorage? Hello? Hey, are you from Alaska? Yes, sir. The last frontier? What part? Right. Uh, I'm here in Anchorage. Anchorage. You know, I lived out in um, Chickaloon for a, a season. Chickaloon uh, Palmer. Uh-huh. You know, mile 81? Sure. Glen Island Highway? Sure. <laughs> Pretty far out there, yes, sir. Yeah, man. Listen, I love Alaska. If I had my druthers, as my grandmother used to say, I would love to live in Alaska three or four months out of the year. I would get there probably yeah. into May, 
June, July, August, it's beautiful. What do you say to that? You're going to skip breakup? <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to be here for all the cleanup? Oh man, are you kidding me? And listen, I stayed uh through Thanksgiving and one of the jobs on the ranch I was at stepfather had was um he had me go out and fill these various diesel generators on the property. And I would run out there be bone chilling cold and you know, I had to grab gasoline out of one of these metal handles and uh thank God uh, I only had to learn the lesson one time. Boy, your hand can stick right to that metal, man. It's so cold. You better have yeah. gloves and full body suit, everything. But yeah, it's, it's beautiful out there. Yeah, it's brutal cold here right now. One thing you don't have out there, you don't have snakes or spiders, do you? Uh, no, no snakes. No, We do have spiders, no ticks, no fleas, so that's kind of a blessing. Just moose. And bears. <laughs> yes, yes, moose and bears. Well, thank you for tuning in all the way from Alaska. What's your name tonight? Uh, my name's Christian. Christian, you're on with Brother John Terrell. How can we help you tonight, sir? Yes, sir. So I wanted to thank Brother John. He helped my wife out. She has a or had a reflexology and an acupressure business, and we didn't know that. You know, that's a that's a no no house yesterday and today and we got rid of everything and shut the business down and so I wanted to thank him for helping us out with that and um, you know I don't know if there's anything that he can maybe maybe throw a prayer out for us for cleansing the house and cleansing us of anything that we might have brought in were you doing any Reiki or light healing also no, no, sir. Okay. It was it was just that pressure and and reflexology. Brother John. Okay, <clears throat> uh, I would suggest this. Uh, we go, I would be glad to pray for you. But um, as I talked to your wife early today, actually the part was yesterday I talked to her that um, it is important to do what I would call a systematic cleaning, and that you do have the book. And um, if you and your wife together just read through, uh, you know, the different pages um, and then systematically break uh, curses, uh, take care of traumas, I believe there are some arrestive element spirit that it needs to be dealt with. Uh, I got a demon listing in the back of my book. So if, you, if both of you just sit down and, and take time, it might take maybe a week or two weeks or something like that. But systematically, just go through in prayer and taking care of that uh, is going to help you to uh, get this behind you. And uh, sure. so that would be my advice to you. And if okay. you run into any problems, uh, you have my phone number, and uh, I'd be glad to talk to either you or your wife uh, if you get stuck in any particular prayer situation. Okay. And uh, my wife had also mentioned that um, I have uh, psoriasis, and she said they'd be able to offer some advice for me to me to help um, you with that. Yeah, the um, in the um, there it, there's another book that we are using, um, uh, which is called um, a more excellent way, and this is written by. Um, uh, Pastor Henry Wright, and um, behind every disease is a spiritual root. Uh, of course, if you have an accident and you get damaged, uh, that does not necessarily have a spiritual root. Uh, if you go to uh, uh, lesson number uh, five, healthy birth of a Christian, um, that will give you a an understanding of where diseases come from. Uh, I believe this that um, when she opened up uh, and did reflexology and acupuncture, uh, that that brought in demons. And when you use demon power, uh, they they channel through you. It is also going to affect you, and that's going to be uh, causing different diseases in your personal body. 
So, so that can be those demons can be thrown out. Uh, you've broken the curses and so on. We be healing up. Uh, stress is another thing that can cause it. Uh, we also have depending on what kind of food you're eating, uh, particularly if you're up in an area where you don't have a lot of sunlight um, in the winter time. Uh, there is a deficiency, and um, uh, vitamin D3 is very essential. Uh, what I'm doing my myself for my helping other people with, and uh, I can discuss it with you privately. But if you have calcium and vitamin D3 and um, that combination. Uh, that's that's helping out a lot because a lot of the skin problem is due to lack of vitamin D3. But it got to be a natural vitamin, not a synthetic. Sure. I'd okay. agree there. And, uh, brother, your name again is Dwayne? Forgive me. Your first name again? It was Christian. Christian, I'm sorry. Christian. Um, that's okay. Praise God. Did you go through any renunciations? Uh, we've been praying all week. I mean, we it's kind of a revelation to, you know, like I said, clean house, and we've gotten rid of all our little Buddha statues and, you know, video games, everything. So <clears throat> we're, we're renouncing everything. How about your parents and grandparents? Were any of them involved in anything similar, any form of the occult, Freemasonry? You know, now that you mention it, my grandfather, I heard a story that he was a, a Freemason or a Mason, but I, I dug and tried to find some information, and that's all I could find is that he was a Mason. Well, if he was, but, uh, then you should uh, break that curse in Jesus' name. If it turns out he wasn't, then it won't hurt to do it. You want to do that right now? Sure. Sure. Just saying, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I confess. I confess. That my grandfather. That my grandfather. And perhaps other ancestors. And perhaps other ancestors. In my family tree. In my family tree. Have been involved in masonry. Have been involved. In masonry or other other sins like the occult or witchcraft or other sins like the occult or witchcraft maybe sexual perversion or idolatry maybe sexual perversions or idolatry perhaps uh, battled with um, pride and other sin Perhaps dabbled in I or battled sorry, with pride and other sin. Pride and other sins. Whatever the case may be, Lord, any sin known or unknown. Whatever the case may be, Lord, any sin known or unknown. I repent of right now. I repent of right now. I ask that you would forgive my family right now in Jesus Christ's name. I ask that you forgive my family right now in Jesus Christ's name. And I renounce any of their sins right now. And I renounce any of their sins right now. I want no part of it. I want no part of it. And in Jesus Christ's name. And in Jesus Christ's name. I ask you, Father God, to break the generational curses. I ask you, Father, to break generational curses off of me and my descendants right now. Off of me and my descendants right now. In Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Is, is there anybody you need to forgive tonight, brother, that's ever hurt you in any way? Uh, oh, I've, I've gone down the list and, and pretty much said my my blessings and my 
forgiveness for everybody. So. Okay. Is there any other sin you need to confess and get under the blood of Jesus? Um, not that I can think of immediately. I mean, there's all kinds of little stuff, you know. But. Okay. Well, let's go Nothing after this right now while well, we have you on the line, shall we? Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in agreement with Brother John and the other believers out there, we just lift up our brother Christopher to you right now. You know, Lord, what may be in his family tree or any of ours. And he has uh, confessed the sins of the Lord Jesus. If there's something else specific you need him to renounce, I ask that you would bring it to his mind. But, Lord God, we stand in the gap with our brother right now. And in the name of Jesus, we break all family line curses of Freemasonry, any witchcraft, occult, perversion, pride, idolatry, any other sins, Lord Jesus, that may have come down the family line, brought a curse on our brother or his family. We break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Loose you from it. And I command any spirits and curses that came in to loose you down and come out in Jesus' name. Take a deep cough, brother. <coughs> Come out, every foul, wicked spirit that came in through reflexology, we, we rebuke you and break your power. Come out of here right now and loose them in Jesus' name. Every door open to the enemy be closed in the name of Jesus. We throw those curses and demons out now. In the name of Jesus, we break every curse spoken over you or your family. All witchcraft spoken or sent against you, we break it in the name of Jesus Christ and loose you from it right now in Jesus Christ's mighty name. I rebuke the spirit of premature death, infirmity, skin conditions. We curse it to its root. It will bear no more fruit forever. In Jesus' name, we ask you, Father God, to pour your healing oil on our brother right now. We say be healed right now in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus Christ heals you. Skin be healed in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus and command it to go. Every other unclean spirit the Lord Jesus wants to go now. Go in the name of Jesus. We bless our brother and we ask Ask God that you would show him and his wife if there's anything else they need to get cleaned up or moved out of the house. We thank you for this deliverance you're doing in their lives, and we give you the praise out and the glory. And we command the spirits they will keep coming out during deliverance or be bound up in cages of torment till they do. Unable to communicate with others. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Brother Christopher. God bless you, and uh, I tell you, that's a great book, Christian Dynamics. You're on the right track, my brother. Thank you for tuning in tonight. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Let's go to 404 Area Code out of Georgia. You're on with Brother John Terrell. Can you hear us? Yes. Hello. What what is you your name, me? sister? Yes, yes, ma'am. Welcome aboard tonight. You're on with Minister John Terrell. Clevia. Clevia? Clevia. Uh, yes, I know you. How are you doing? Uh, I need some serious prayer. Well, um, we got Brother John. I'm okay. ready to pray. Tell us what's going yeah, on. Hi, Brother John. I ordered your book. My problem is uh, some of my family members go to a church. One of my sisters says, when I speak about deliverance, they say, Jesus died on the cross. He said, this is finished. If you only just believe and receive it. And I try to explain about deliverance. And I don't know how to respond to that. So I'm ordering all this material for deliverance. I, I'm calling Specifically tonight for my husband, uh, we were separated for 14 years. 
uh, there was witchcraft involved in his 20s, years, and 60s, and he's never gotten help. He's on medication, paranoid schizophrenia. He just came in my room. With, well, his people were into that, and they told him that I had was with another. For 20-some years, he accused me of this constantly, constantly, over and over. So there's, I don't know how to help him because my daughter says he has to want it. So, In other words, uh, I need to talk to someone. I don't know if I can get Brother John. Uh, I, can, uh, oh, oh, no, I so a lot of things that, that I need to discuss, I really can't discuss in the open like this. Yes. Um, Brother John? But can't you just bind these spirits in the meantime? Uh, there was, I told him, I said, you have to forgive. And first of all, it's not, it's not true. I wasn't doing anything, but he believed it all these years. I said, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. And the enemy is talking to his mind, and and his family, uh, they come, when you try to ask them about their bloodline, I mean, what's going on, they're very secretive. We don't talk about that. So I don't know everything that he's, he's been exposed to. You know, a lot of families but are like that. They I keep see. things in the closet. Yeah. Even and family. I see the enemy is using him. He's constantly smoking. Yes. He, he, he's a smoker now. And he constantly drinks coffee. He's up all night. I can just see him being tormented. I don't know how to help him. But I know the enemy is using him to vex me. And I'm, I'm arguing with him. I'm saying things I shouldn't say. And, and we need some help. There's, um, what, this has been going on for this, quite a lot of years. Um, so I, can I write you a letter? Yeah, why don't you do this? Uh, have you got uh, access to email? Do What'd you, you say? Can oh, you yes. write emails? Email. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yes. write to me, uh, and let me give you my email address. It's uh, John, J-O-H-N, okay. dot Terrell, T-O-R-E-L-L, -L, -L, at yes. gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And you yeah, can write me, or, or give me a phone, and give me a phone number, and then I will respond back to you. Oh, okay. Okay, then. Clevia, um, what else did you have there? Yes, sir. What else is coming to mind? Pray for me. I need some serious help because I, I, I've been, I don't, I'm really vexed. I don't get any rest here at home. Me and my daughter live with, with, I mean, sorry, me and my husband live with my daughter right now. We'll be fitting up soon. 